Be a Doll by J.W. Sand. Elena was ahead of the girls. The other teenagers, Terrell, Donna, and Lisa, were always a group. Together they formed the perfect cliche clique. You know, mean girls meets Heathers sort of thing. It was unspeakable. Could not be said that in the halls of Edison High School, there would be at least one person who cared about the other individual. However, there was one, a 13-year-old boy named David, with shaggy dark red hair, green eyes, and just a spattering of freckles. This boy cared about the individual indeed. Know that David had the heart of every girl in the school. He didn't care about that. He hated the way people treated each other. David was very outspoken against anyone singling anybody out that was different in any way, shape, or form. Sure, David had the cute, soft-spoken eyes and the body to boot. At least, he had his tons of fun friend, Justin, and that was enough for him. He did not want that sort of life, the popular stuck-up and worrisome sort where you always wondered if your next step would get you kicked out of society. Then there were the hotties, three blondes and a brunette. Elena was the tallest and thinnest, the leader, and she looked regal. She was born into high society. Donna came from an abusive relationship with her family. What they took out on her, she took out on the student body. She never wore a smile, but she still was very pretty. Donna had the face of a child. Tara, with her warm smile and good intentions, charmed the teachers and put the boys to shame. With dark, glassy blue eyes that were always scanning some romance novel, for the most part, she seemed to get her way with those baby blues. Then there was Lisa, the prettiest of the bunch, with a small rounded nose and pouty lips. Together they completed a nightmarish team. Be a doll and do my homework for me. Elena would say, and the rest of the group actually snapped to her step like a military march that was being controlled by some alternate unnatural force. Be a doll and get us something to drink. And she would go on with her phrase throughout the day. Be a doll and this or and that or what. It was on a Tuesday. And I swear that it was all real, so please listen or read on whatever you may be doing. Hey, look, it's very well turtle and lot of y'all. Elena snoozily spoke as the rest of the group giggled at her obnoxious and obscene joke. Lady was a southern belle and a cutie to boot but there weren't very many Southerners near Jersey, so she was the blunt of many horrible jokes. Myrtle was mocked for her name and constantly teased by others. They called her Turtle, of course. It was horrible for her, so she became a poser. She had tried to act like Elena. She wore her dresses, she took on her poses, her walk, she was a very plain Jane trying to fit in. He had had enough. So David spoke and he said, Oh, Elena and friends, I curse you. Be a doll and sit with my collection. 
With skin jewel white and cheeks so red, eyes so pretty you'd be better off dead. Sleeping forever, forever sleep. Your mouth will not open. You will no longer peep. No sound will you make towards those who hate you. From now on, you'll be made of porcelain and loved with virtue. And when he was satisfied, the curse had stuck. David sat down to his lunch. And what exactly does that mean, puke face? Said Elena. Oh, you'll know. You'll know. It was lighter. Nice day for a walk back home. No need to have your parents pick you up when it's that kind of weather. The hotties began their peaceful walk home. The birds were out singing, the flowers were in bloom, nothing wrong in sight. Everything nice, everything calm, everything quiet. Hey look, there's Dylan. Elena spoke. Hey Lisa, say, would you be a doll and go over to him for me? She continued. Tell him. I have a really huge crush on him. Ask him if he wants a date next week. Dylan was a popular boy. Shaggy hair, punk jeans, skateboard in hand. Bad boy type. Lisa took up. She couldn't. Lisa pushed, pulled, screamed. Lisa, what is your problem? That is so weird. Lisa spoke out. I don't know. It's not me. I can't move. Help! It was at this time that Dylan rode off on his skateboard, homeward bound. Elena grasped Lisa by the wrist. Lisa, your skin, it's hard. Almost feels like glass. I can't. She mumbled, hummed, then, then nothing. Her eyes became glassy. One went along before the others started to experience the same thing. Off in the distance, someone had followed the girls. The girls' vision became foggy. And then, the darkness overcame them. Then they saw nothing. In the darkness of their gloom, they heard a voice, a familiar voice. I told you, now you're my pretty little shiny dolls. Be a doll and uh, stay with me.